Good morning, welcome, buenas tardes, bastardes, buongiorno, all that shit, you know, in a nice way. Um, we play this game again. I'm sorry about that. I'm not sorry at all. There's too many apologies in the world, man. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. I've just started playing this guy. I haven't lost to him, that was someone else. This was against him beforehand, etc, etc. Right, let's get our thinking caps on, man. I'm feeling so scroggly. I'm feeling rusty. I'm feeling unhealthy. I'm feeling unhealthy, guys. I was working out every day before and I haven't worked out for like four days now. I'm starting to feel a bit scroggly. If that's even a word. If it's not, then I will get it added to the English dictionary. In due course, scroggly. So. Heads up, yellow pokers. This guy is... I'm not sure. My notes say that he seems regish. He bets a lot when checked to. 71% of the time to be exact. And that tricky lines are good versus him. He's typically a non-believer. For a true believer, this one's a fever, you know? So we'll see what we can do. We have the opportunity for some deep games. If I double up, no. Well, we're 200 big blinds deep now anyway, but that's something, right? So we're just looking to stay balanced. Play pretty tight. I am still in a bad downswing at the moment. Approaching 50 buy-ins under EV. Which kind of hurts. But luckily it's only 20 PLO, so... That's only a thousand euros. So... Could be worse. I mean, it does happen. I'd say probably three times a year. Maybe three or four times a year. You get like around a 50 buy-in downswing. But also I realized after like 40, after like 35, 40 buy-ins that I lost, I realized I was playing a bit too aggressive anyway. So I took a step back. I mean, I took a step really back. Ugh. And um, went through some hands. Seems I'm playing too aggressive. So now we're just playing like a nip. And I was worried that it's really boring, but I think that's how I used to play. And being in it in the correct way doesn't mean that you're never gonna bluff, right? You have to bluff. You must bluff. It's just compulsory in this world, right? But being in it means that you're, when you're bluffing, you're absolutely waiting for the best hands to bluff. So, you know, the card removal, blockers, etc. Um, versus his frequencies. Instead of just bluffing for the sake of it, you're literally waiting till you have the nut blockers uh, and just great bluffing opportunities, you know. So he seems pretty straightforward, we seem pretty straightforward. I'm not folding this to a three bet. I could raise the flop, but I don't really want to get blown off my hand, so calling is better. If I had a backdoor flush draw, I think I could uh, bet this flop more often than check. So he just check gives up there. Ah. It's good to be alive, man. 
in this day and age, you know. The odds are slim. We are part of a unbelievable statistic. I mean, how many people in the world are now dead in the history of mankind? We must be in the 0.003% of people. I mean, that's just a guess, but it's going to be a small number, right? We're all winners by now. How can we possibly lose? How can we possibly lose? So this might not be the most educational video. No, no, I stand corrected. This actually might be an educational video. It just might not be an extremely action-packed video, right? So we're obviously playing somebody that may be a regular player playing quite tight like we are right now so we do need to up our bluff percentages up our bluff frequencies so this is a good hand to do it we've got a jack blocker we've got the five blocker and um, it's a lockdown board if he doesn't have a straight here he doesn't really or a set it doesn't have anything really so we're looking to get our first check raising in the match right here If he see bets, obviously. We could also just donk bet. But you've got to mix it up. You've got to stay balanced, right? You've got to have uh, some check raise bluffs, some donk bluffs, right? It's crucial. Crucial ligament damage. So stay with me on this journey of epic proportions. It's a pretty weak hand to call a 3-bet, but we are in position. He did 3-bet a hand like 7-7-8-8 seven, seven, eight, eight in the last match. So he's not just 3-betting aces. I mean, obviously he's a reg, so he's not 3-betting aces only. We flop second pair and a flush draw, so we can't fold here. See a turn card. Against a double barrel. Um, I expect him to double barrel card this card somewhat of the time when he has nothing. But his double barrel frequency is a very low, 20%. We block like King 10 Jack. If we have a queen, we block a flush draw. So he's either double barreling complete air or he does have an ace. So we're going to give him credit. It wouldn't be a mistake to call there against somebody who is betting the turn more than 20% of the time. It would be absolutely fine to play. But against him, I like to fold the turn, I believe. So I've trimmed down my 3-bet frequencies because when you're on a downswing and you're just running really bad, right? There's nothing wrong with just decreasing the variance. If you can handle the variance, and I can, I'll be honest, then it's fine to just keep 3-betting. But I think I was starting to make some mistakes, right? So, I find that I, I do generally do better when I have a lower three bet. Like 10% 10, 10 in a heads up game, that's pretty tight. I'm gonna go for a bet here. We can start to bluff some cards. It's a worse flop for his range. We don't have any clubs in our hand, so somewhat more likely that he can have a flush draw but he just check and gives up there his check fold in three bet pot is a hundred percent so a hundred percent of the time that he checks after he three bets on the flop he folds so that's an interesting stat to watch out for 
We only have 200 hands on him. But for the moment, every time he checks in a 3-bet pot, I'm going to be betting. This is a bad hand to call a 3-bet with if he does decide to 3-bet. But he does not. Why is he going to fold that hand? Another thing that I've done because I'm a down swinging is decrease my flop C-bet. Because I was C betting like 85% of flops. And I think it's better to have a little bit around 60 to 70% of flop bets. And you just protect your flop checking range by having some strong hands in there as well. So you're not just bluffable every time you check the flop. Well, as I said, it's not going to be the most exciting video. But we can try and excite things a little bit. We can have some fun in the sun. I will call a flop bet because we have the back door flush draws. I'm rooting for the five of hearts, I believe. Five of spades, unbelievable. I mean, if I get it wrong, I at least half get it right, you know. The decision whether to bluff this card or not, I don't think we're going to because... Uh, it does complete backdoor flush draw, so we might have to bet twice if he has spades, obviously. But I think checking is probably better. We do have 7-8, which is somewhat of a strong hand. Very hard to get any value here, but I'm going to try a third pot size bet just to see what happens. I rivered the straight and went for a check call. So he did have the spades and was not folding on the turn. That river bet is not 100% standard. Uh, I don't know if he would call with aces there. But it just makes you tougher to play against when you're making merged river bets with like the middle part of your range. Obviously if I'm betting a third pot there with like a very mediocre hand, I do need to bet one third pot on the river with the nuts and with complete air as well. So we go for a three bet, but I'm a bit cautious because we have a low three bet percentage, right? It's only been a few hands that we've played, so I don't know if he knows um, my three betting range is like quite aces heavy. And with the ace of spades, I'm gonna go and bet the flop. If a turn is a spade, then I'm obviously going to be bluffing. We go for the check raise. Just have to ditch our hand. And we could have folded this hand on the button. Yeah, he three bets us, so we have to we have to tighten up our opening range a little bit because he is three betting 20%. It's not a huge amount, but it is uh take somewhat of an adjustment. We don't want to be race folding. Uh, lead the turn with top and bottom pair. Get some value from any ace. I can see my dog in my camera. I'm going to bet this flop. I really don't like it because we have no blockers at all. I mean, literally have no spades. But he is check folding 100% of the time in three bet pots. But I think this is probably pushing my luck a little bit. But it still, still folds. But you've got to try. If someone's doing something 100% of the time, you just need to abuse it until they start to adapt so he checked again in the three bet pot and he just folds again 
So he can keep three betting and chip folding all he wants. Seems like a good strategy for us to make some chips with nothing. I'm going to check back the turn. We have river top two. We're going to make a third pot size bet again. Okay, he has a flush. So we're value cutting ourselves against him by making these merged bets so far. Only two samples though. But he seems like that's twice he's rivered a very strong hand and just checked to us. So he seems very trappy. I'm going to three bet my kings. I need to get some three bets in there. So I'm looking for the best three bet hands. I do not like getting four bet at all. Only three samples for his four bet and it's zero percent. Can I call with the kings? With a suit I think I can. Obviously this is the flop that gets me in trouble. Certainly gets me in trouble here. Probably fold to the four bet. People just don't fold with four bet. People just don't four bet with aces without aces enough. I don't think. So if we're calling the flop, we have to expect a turn bet there, really. So probably not the best play, guys. I'm sorry. Does that have a nut suit? Not a nut suit, but I have a king eye suit, right? I just I can't help it. I'm going to actually go for a bluff on the river. Turn our bottom two pair into a bluff. We may be winning, but we need some merged river bets. We rep a flush very well. I want him to be in a tricky situation if he does have a better two pair than us. I can see a husky. We're going to three bet our aces. Actually, let's not three bet our aces. We don't have a nut suit. Not that it matters, but so far we're three bet aces with three bet kings. We've lost them both. Not that that should change your strategy, but I need to mix in some flat call with my aces, right? And it's not a good flop for us. That is a great turn for us, though. I expect him to barrel with all his flush draws and straight draws, even though we have ace, ace, six. Great river card for us. He has to bluff his flush draws here. He has a flush draw with no pair. Problem is, it's very hard to get any value from anything here? I think if, if he has pocket queens, I really don't think he calls a raise or anything. Yeah. And it makes sense that he just has us beat sometimes. Typical. Boring. If he has queens, he doesn't bet a turn anyway, so we definitely don't get value from anything. So yeah, that was a very fortunate turn and river card for him.
Because we don't call the river, maybe, if uh, the triple barrels without the three. I'm going to check back the uh, nut flush here, because we have the queen of spades, so it's really hard for him to have a good hand here. And I'm betting a third pot on the river, just to balance out my previous merged bets on the river when I had middle two pair. So I, I expect this, called, this bet to get called a lot. And it does. He actually did have a flush, so he missed some value, but we protected our our merged betting range on the river by betting one third pot. You can't just block a bet the river. Um, you can't just block a bet the river with medium strength hands. I'm just in a flat call here because I really don't want to get a four bet, even though we do have an ace in our hand. And we're just going to check here. Great turn card for us. And it's time for us to get some value from our hand. It's kind of hard to actually get any value though. Because we have the queen, we have the kings and we have an ace. So it's very hard there to actually get any value. So I think a better play would be to check there. There's not too many hands that are going to be calling us on the turn. Uh, I guess turn flush draws. And maybe straight draws. So maybe not the worst bet but flop top and bottom I'm gonna go for a bet because this hand needs a lot of protection um, he's not check raised us yet we played a hundred hands with him have we that feels like a lot or was that from earlier on I don't know we've played a few hands with him already right he hasn't check raised yet on the flop, so I'm happy just to bet fold on the flop here against him. So let's talk about his tendencies and how we're going to exploit them. So he's playing pretty tight pre-flop, but he is 3-betting 30% of his hands which is a lot. Um, he's chick folding very, very high percentage of the time in three red pots. So it's allowing us to steal some pots. So we're gonna try and steal it here if he checks to us. If he bets, we'll give him credit and just fold, even though it's a pretty bad board for us. I would like at least one heart here to, to bluff or backdoor flush draw. Uh, I don't have either of those things, so it's not, we don't have the best blockers but we do have a five so that's something at least so we'll go for a bet and he folds again so that's one way we're exploiting him um seems pretty abc to be honest you know just rivering quads and value betting not messing around too much i'm going to call with a backdoor flush draw <clears throat> I'm going to go for a bluff here with our bottom pair our well, middle pair I just want to up the aggression a little bit because he's playing so straightforward so I want to start leading turns check raising turns etc and make, making sure I'm staying balanced and I think he's folding too much basically The only hand we might have misplayed so far is the uh, the pocket kings. Calling a four bet with the kings. If he checks here, I'm probably not going to bluff this uh, bluff this board. It wouldn't really be a bluff if we got kings, but I'm just going to give up here and hope he has a six seven, yeah, or seven eight with with flush draw. We're going to flat our aces. Not had a good flop for our kings or aces yet. I mean, I 
obviously we can't fold on the flop. Check call the turn, depending on the river, we can make a value bet. The good, the good thing is there's two high cards and two low cards, which is a bit better than having obviously three high cards or three low cards. And we'll go for a value bet here. I expect him to bet his kings a lot of the time on the flop. And if he raises us here, I'm pretty confident we can fold because I think when people were just giving up on the pot, they just check flop, check turn, and then raise over a river bet. Uh, I think it's, you never really see that line too much. I think when people have given up on the hand, they're not gonna just decide to bluff at the last minute usually. You've just got to get make some generalizations. But first you need to have the experience in the games to make the generalizations. There is no substitute for experience. Gut shot, back door flush draw. Interesting he goes for a quite a big bet on the flop. So I think he's only C bet once or twice in a three bet pot, and he bet half pot when he had the gut shot and the flush draw the hand before. Now he's betting like three, which we haven't seen yet. I wouldn't be surprised if he had a very strong hand here, like top pair and a flush draw, over pair and a flush draw, wrap and a flush draw. I don't expect him to have just one pair and nothing else there. I'm gonna go for a check raise. I wanted to donk, but I think uh, people donk their strong hands too frequently. So, I think my first donk wants to be a bluff. Obviously, it would be beautiful if we could get the money in here. Just the top set and the nut flush draw. I'm actually going to go for a check here because I... Obviously, he doesn't have a set. I think he raises the flop, right? We can't lose. I do want to give him a chance to uh, bluff his busted draws here because it looks like we have a set. Or we have top two pair. Uh, he just has five, six. So, optimistic call for him to be calling with five, six. With nothing else. I mean, against that exact hand, we played the hand perfectly because we don't expect him to have a top two pair on the flop. We have uh, the nut flush draw, so we can't have that as well, obviously. So, uh, I really don't think he has yeah, a strong hand on the turn or the river. So, we're just giving him a chance to bluff. We're ripping like a 9-7. Like, we're ripping like a wrap or a set on the flop. Possibly with a flush draw. But when we check back the turn and the river, like, we hardly ever have a flush. So, he should be bluffing. So, I've just given him the opportunity to bluff, basically, there. It's a very non-standard way to play the hand. People will just like raise the flop, bet the turn, bet the river, and just get him to fold, right? So he has nothing, but his range is so weak. And uh, we're, just we're just protecting our range for when we're checking as well. And we're giving him the chance to bluff to see if he will bluff. Like when he has a weak hand, it's obvious that he has a weak hand by the river and he didn't want to bluff. So it's safe to say that he's probably under bluffing and that we can fold a lot to his like multiple streets of aggression like he bets flop turn river i don't think he's that kind of player to do that because he just had the ex he just had the opportunity to do that and he didn't do it so a barreling turn here and i got top pair and a flush draw standard river card completes the straight and the flush it does have the flush obviously doesn't go for a value bet so, I mean, he, he did have two pair on the flop, to be fair, two, top and bottom pair. So, he's not folding on a flush draw. But yeah, he's obviously not going for like thin value or like even, that's not even thin value there. So, his bets are just going to be so polarized on the river. And I think they're just going to be strong hands way too often. So, this opponent should be easy to beat if he doesn't keep getting there on us. But we're in it for the long haul, you know. 
This is an educational video. How to adapt to your opponents. Ah, uh, she's just gonna check here. We don't have too many full houses in our range. I'm just gonna give up. You win, pair of sevens, good. So he decided to, so yeah. Like I was saying just a second ago, his bets are quite polarized. So on that flop, he has nothing. We go for a bet here. We got a bluff turn. Got a jack of spades, somewhat relevant. Yeah, so his bets are just too polarized. Uh, between obviously very strong hands and weak hands. So on that flop, he's only betting flushes and uh, nothing basically. On that occasion, he's betting nothing, but I still think he's very unbalanced in that. He's going to be betting his strong hands too often. We have the Ace of Diamonds. We're going to float some. Yeah, against his double barrel. His double barreling uh, range, I think, is strong. Because in the last hand, he had nothing on the flop. He bet flop. And then on the turn, it's unlikely we have a full house, but he didn't continue with his bluff, right? So I'm three betting here with some blockers. Flop the top pair. King of diamonds, uh, king of hearts on the turn, please. That would be fantastic. That's not the card we wanted to see. We do have the nut flush draw, but it's only four, seven, and seven, nine that gets here. Obviously, we have to call a turn bear, but I really don't like it. King of Hearts. How often do I call the cards, guys? How often do I call the cards? It's unbelievable. He's not ever value betting River, right? Never. Because he's only betting River with strong hands, as we've seen. So I have to shove here. Hope to get called by a straight. If he has nothing, which, yeah, I, I don't think he has anything anyway, because on that turn, it's not super likely he has that straight draw, right? But he's never bluffing anyway with that. Well, he might be because he is polarized. So he, he might, but I, I'm going to say it's like a 5% chance. He, I mean like a 5% chance there he bluffs with nothing, right, on the river. I think it's more likely that we bet and get called by a straight than we check and he bluffs with nothing. We have a wrap and two backdoor flush draws, so go for the cool here. It's a very reasonable turn card. With the blockers, we're just gonna flat call. Give him a chance to bluff the river if he ever does. Wow, I don't like this, man. He has the blockers. It was either he had the blockers, but it's very hard for him to have the blockers when we have the blockers, or he has the nuts, because he has no other hand there. He could have aces, I guess. Uh, but I don't think he always bets the flop with aces. I don't think he bets that size on the flop with aces. So, yeah, very likely on the river he has blockers, which is not that likely because we have them. So, nuts or air. Do we go for a four bet? These are quite bad aces, so we'll just slow play them. We're 300 big blinds deep. We can certainly see a flop. And we'll go for some value here. Hope to get called by some straight draws, but yeah, I think he's chick folding a lot of the time. Gut shot, flush draw, backdoor straight draw. How about the eight of Eight of hearts on the turn, how about that one? Ah oh, man, he can't do it every time. 
You can't do it every time. This is a bad hand to check raise because we have no jack or queen in our hand and we block the clubs. We don't block an ace. We don't block any diamonds. We do block... I don't know what I'm talking about. I did know what I was talking about when I started off that sentence, but then I got confused. But yeah, no, generally it's not a good hand to check raise. This is a better hand to raise. Can't check raise because we're in position. Because it's bad to call in position with a 9 high flush draw on a paired board. But we can raise it. But he just folds. He's, he's just check folding 100. Uh, it's more like 75% now in check raised pots. I mean, in three bet pots. So our three bet is around 10%. Well, it's exactly 10%, guys. 10.0. And that's the right kind of range that I like. With three three bets some aces, with three bets some kings, with three bets some ace queen ten eight double suited. We need to mix in some low rundowns in there as well. Your six, seven, eight, nine double suited. We need to get that in there. Your six, six, seven, seven double suited. We need to get that in there. But apart from that, I'm happy with that range of three betting. Don't need to be three betting junk out of position deep against a somewhat reasonable player. He's certainly not showing enough aggression. I'm gonna go for a check raise here. We've got a gut shot, backdoor flush draw, not flush draw. So we will go for a check raise, for real. We're not always three betting our aces as well. So that helps on this flop. When we haven't three bet our aces pre-flop in the past, it is possible for us to have aces here. A little bit less likely now, of course. That's the worst card for us. Now he continues with all his aces. So just gonna give up. We block the, yeah, we block the straight draws a little bit as well. I expect him to fold any hand that isn't an ace there anyway, but I don't expect him to fold an ace on the flop, obviously. Go for our standard bet versus his check. This hand needs a lot of protection anyway. We have three pairs. The question is, do we bluff or not? I don't think there's much need to bluff. I mean, we don't really get him to fold many better hands with our bluff. Anyway, if he has 8-9, he probably see that's the flop most of the time. He's never folding a straight. He's probably not even folding like a 10-jack queen if he has that. So, no need to bluff here, really. Just probably... Yeah, check fold. It's possible he's turning hand like 10 jack into a bluff, but too easy for him to have a straight there. And he's not bluffing enough anyway, so when we have like a mediocre hand and he's making a river bet, obviously it's fine to fold. We don't need to be looking him up. If he starts betting every single river, then obviously I might look him up with three pairs. Oh, it might be the end of the video, guys. No. Sometimes this site freezes and you think they're like leaving the table, but it's uh, just unexplainable. <laughs> you can see the dog in the background. <laughs> Poor thing. 
Oh, they're better than it. Wild Siberian Husky, ladies and gentlemen. So I feel that this video may have been quite educational. I've got quite in depth here. I said it wouldn't be an entertaining video, but it's been educational, I believe. This isn't a great hand to open. Yeah. We don't want to call a three bet with that hand. So we're not quite adjusting enough to our raises. So I just can't help it. Well, that's the hardest adjustment to make to tighten up your raising range, I find. I'm going to peel here because we have some backdoor nut flush drawers. And now that we basically have a weak hand and he's checked the turn, I feel like I have to bluff. Must bluff situation there. We rip a flush very well. And he's done it again. He's opened with a hand he doesn't want to call a three bit with. But I'm realizing the mistake in the session, right? So what do we do then? We limp hands that we don't want to raise fold with. We can limp cool with the hand, but uh, we don't want to be raise folding it or raise calling it. So we can limp cool, keep the stack to pot ratio bigger, Obviously, if you're only limping hands like this, like that doesn't have a suited ace, for example, if you're always raising the suited aces and, and then you start to make a limping strategy, well, now you need to limp some strong hands as well. It just goes, it just makes sense. Like whatever you're doing, you need to have every kind of hand in there. So if you're limping some hands, you need to have some strong hands, some weak hands, etc. I mean, it's, it's basic science, but making sure you actually do it is the tough thing, right? So you need to limp some aces and that. If you're limping, if you're just raising all your hands, then it doesn't make a difference, right? But I have to bet here with our triple gut shot and we have a triple gut shot. Three, six, jack. Yeah, and spade. We don't actually have a pair at the moment, so. I feel like I have to bluff this river. I don't think it's actually going to work that often, but we have a seven blocker and we have an ace, which is somewhat helpful. But yeah, if he has the nuts, then, well, second nuts, pretty much the nuts. It's hard to get him to fold the nuts, but I didn't think it was getting that many folds, to be honest. But I'm at the bottom of my range, so I feel like bluffing can't be that bad. I'm just going to check the turn here with jacks and check the river. I'm going to call the river bet. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's more likely he has a deuce. Wow, he peels me on the flop with just a deuce. Ace, deuce, six, nine. No flush draw on the queen, jack, deuce. And then it comes a queen. Wow. I would say, more likely he has a deuce in that situation than the queen. I think he just bets the turn a lot of the time. But it's so likely he has like a busted straight draw or flush draw. But I don't think he's bluffing the river enough for that. So we're going for a raise here on the flop. Yeah, it's not folding. I'm just gonna go for a river bluff. Checked all the way down. So yeah, he is getting some good run outs. Like all the all the jaws bricked. And the deuce pairs. But uh, I can't see how he has a deuce. But then again, I forgot he would be calling me on the flop with just the deuce and nothing else. Go for a check raise again because we just check raised like a few hands ago. 
So we go for a check raise with the nuts here. If he bets, obviously. He does not bet. So a bit of a turn. Standard river card. Probably just going to check fold. The worst card in the deck. 5 8 gets there. 8 10 gets there. Jack 10 gets there. Flush draw gets there. So this guy is running pretty good against us. But we're still, still winning a tiny amount of him. But that's how it goes sometimes, guys. I'm happy with my strategy against him. I'm not happy with opening and folding this hand, though. That's the hardest thing. <laughs> to not open hands that you're going to fold to a 3 bet. I just did it again. So yeah, I feel like he's run pretty good. Um, and I feel like we've played pretty good. Not that he's played badly, obviously, but I'm happy that we would easily be able to exploit this opponent over a big sample size. He's just not bluffing enough. I'm going to 3 bet this hand. And go for a flop bet. Check turn. Because we have two diamonds in our hand. And go for a reasonable size river bet. Calls us with 10-5. So that check on the turn gets him there. Uh, Suspicious and tricky lines are good versus him and non-believer. That was my notes on him in the first place and seems like yeah, that rings true. We have so many backdoor draw here, man. So many backdoor draws. I feel like I have to call here. I don't like his bet sizing though. Yeah, it's, I think he's. Just, I think he's just too obvious. He's just not making this sizing. And he's not doing it often enough. I mean, we have a pair of threes. We have bottom pair, but... Um, I think he's very unbalanced. With his bet sizing. Got some backdoor draw here. Backdoor draws here again. I'm going to go for a check raise. Hope to turn a good card. It just folds. Got some future blockers here. And a backdoor flush drop. And two overcards to the nine. So I can pretty much bluff on so many turn cards. So I'm gonna call the flop. Now that we have top pair, it's pretty nice. And this is a marginal situation, guys. But uh, I put myself in it. I'm going to check here. I don't think I can get him to fold any over pairs. Probably call a river bet here, King Queen. Ended up at the top of our range, considering on the flop we just had a pair of sixes. So I will call a river bet unless he like pots it or something. I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. He has to have an overpair, right? But we have a king blocker. He's literally telling me he's got aces or somehow got a three again. He's literally telling me he's got an aces or he's got a three. I have to call, right? As played. Yeah, he's just having good runouts all the time. Nine, three. He's so unbalanced. He's just not bluffing enough. I think we can fold there. Even though we end up at the top of our range. He's just always having it when he's making like reasonable size bets. I mean, it's just such an unlikely, so hard for him to have a three, obviously, but he just has it every time. So. I think we can just fold, even when we're near the top of our range and like he's just repping such a narrow, range of hands that uh, like we can just fold we block kings the other hand aces or a three right that's what I say or a bluff right but the thing is those are the three hands he has there on the river and aces 
There's aces, three, or a bluff, right? But the thing is, he's not bluffing enough. So if we remove the bluffs from his river range, plus what I said earlier on about uh, looks like people are giving up on the hand. Anyway, he went bet, check, bet. And we take that line as well, which gets us called. But generally, people are not taking that line with that with a, with a with a bluff. So he has less bluffs in his range on the river there. He either has aces or threes, and both of those hands actually beat us. So we could probably fold. We put ourselves in that tricky situation, so we can't really be too uh, annoyed. But yeah, we were calling to bluff turn cards because uh, our sixes were so good on uh, so many turn cards there. Like literally, if the turn was a deuce for seven or eight, right? Deuce for seven or eight, we have the nut blockers. And also if it's a six, then we have a set. So there's just too many, uh, there's just too many good opportunities to be blocking on the turn, to be folding there. And it's very likely we're gonna hit a deuce four, seven or eight. Yeah, bit of a frustrating match. Um, but I'm extremely happy with the way we're playing, the reads we're making. I feel like he's not adjusting at all. He's just still not bluffing enough. Uh, under bluffing, yeah. Just not balanced enough. Three betting probably too much and then check folding too much. Fucking hell, come on, bro. I just bet because I thought he timed out or something. Just, uh, I was in a trance. I'll just write off this hand. No strategy involved here. I'm going to fold my chips, mate. Chips are never good. Bottom chips on a straight and flush draw board with higher chips available as well. Bargain. So yeah, pretty much even, but I mean, don't watch that. It's not about watching the, uh, it's not about watching the winnings and losings. It's about how much of a good read do you have on your opponent. I want to check raise here. We have some blockers. Our hand is pretty weak. Like we have obviously double gut shot, I believe. I don't want to see an ace. An ace is not what I want to see. We have a nine as well. Block somewhat of queen nine combos. I think it's just fine to check raise. This hand. Ah, uh, we can bet the river. I think he has a busted draw a lot of the time. But we're probably winning with the nine. So. I don't know if he ever folds a queen. Yeah, he should. No, he doesn't need to fold a queen. I think he will, though. But I think he has a... A draw more of the time. Maybe like bottom pair and a gut shot or something. Who knows? It's a guessing game, man. You're never going to get it always right. But you're just trying to get it right more often than you get it wrong, right? Wrong, right. Bottom pair. Gut shot. Back or flush draw. We could go for another check raise, or we could just check call. Let's go for another check raise. I feel like he's... 
powering too much. This is a good turn card. Very good turn card. Very, very good, eh? That's why you check raise. I think you've got a big edge against this guy. Not the biggest of edges, because he's not too bad in the first place, but I mean... As big of as an, as big of an edge as I'm probably going to get. But you've got to work hard to get it. You've got, you've got to mentally not be lazy, right? To home in on your opponent's tendencies and to adjust to them, exploit them. Yeah, I'm just gonna check give up. Even when I river the flush. If he bet, yeah, I'm folding. I promise you I'm folding here. <coughs> we river, we've got queens and fives and threes and we've got a nine high flush. But I don't think he's taking a bet check bet line with a worse hand than this. He's not bluffing enough. Last time he had it, every time he had it. I mean, I wish I could just call without the money and if I won just not keep the money just to show you that we're beat here right just to show you that we're beat but that is the skill in poker is just having just trusting your decisions you have to trust that they're right you have to know that they are the right decisions without looking them up I mean sometimes you call for information right Sometimes you call for information. So now he's making his half size pot a bet. We have a jack and a flush draw. No need to bet here because I don't think he's folding an ace ever. So, and he's not folding a straight or two pair probably. If he has a hand like seven five, I don't think he's folding. Yeah. He's not folding an ace. I'm not going to try and get him to fold an ace with my... I mean, I've got outs, right? I've got nine flush outs, two jack outs. That's 11 outs. There's plenty of outs, guys. I've raised the hands that I shouldn't have raised, maybe. <clears throat> so yeah, we are leaking a little bit of money by raise folding, but he is leaking way more money by three bet folding. So our mistake is smaller than his mistake. So he bet half pot when he had ace 10, 10, 8, or ace, yeah, on ace, deuce, 7, diamond, diamond. So that's not a super strong hand. And then he bet 80% pot when he had a flush draw on a gut shot. Maybe he, met, he bets more with his drawing hands on the flop. Uh, you're dunking into me. First donk he's actually done. First donk he's actually done. So, we just start off with the call, but when he's donked one hand and 200 hands, uh, I think he either has the nuts <coughs> or a super strong draw. He might have a jack with a flush draw. He might have a hand like <coughs> jack queen with a flush draw. I'd love to check just to see what he actually had. I'm gonna make a really small value bet and just hope to get called. I'm just interested to see what hand he donked with. Okay, he donked with a, a gut shot. He donked with ace queen. So he had nothing. He, he donked half pot size with ace queen and he called a river bet with nothing, ace high, just to see what I had. So I've got blockers here. I'm pot leading the flop. And I'm going to pot lead the river. So interesting decision for him to make there. I guess he has the queen. He has a queen blocker, right? But he, it was a very weak attempt. He just half potted the flop and then just gave up. Like on the eight turn, it's even better for it. His queen becomes even better on the eight turn. 
because now all my two pairs are pretty weak, very weak actually, because the flops, the, the board is eight, nine, ten jack, and he's got a queen. So it's obviously 25% less likely I have a straight to the queen, but instead he just decides to check. So maybe he just thought I need to bluff. This is my attempt at a bluff. Half pot sized donk bet and then give up when you turn the best card for your bluffing. <laughs> oh, bless him. We should be crushing this dude. But you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. But yeah, so he's, that bet was very polarizing anyway. He had just absolutely nothing. He had a blocker. I mean, once he doesn't bet the turn, then uh, it's a lot more likely he doesn't have a strong hand. The video is a one hour, one minute and 30 seconds. Seems like a reasonable amount of time. Um, might wrap it up. We'll play our next button and we'll wrap it up. I feel like it's been a very educational video, guys. I hope you felt the same. Play our last hand here. That's gonna be it, guys. Well, we won like 12 euros off him in an hour. I guess that's a good big blinds per 100, right? For 20 PLA. But uh, yeah, I feel like I obviously should have owned him. But you can't control these things in just like a one hour session. The most important thing is to get reads, exploit your opponent, and stay level headed. Thank you very much, guys. It's been an honor. And I will see you in the next video.